Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue our second session tonight. Today, uh, in terms of the sexual obsession, and uh, I'm talking about this phenomenon called masturbation. And uh, now we are just talking about, in the next uh, heading there is facts about sex. Now, some of this we have already touched on last week. Just to refresh you that you understand that we are sexual beings. God has created us that way. And you better understand the sexuality of yourself and of your future spouse or your present spouse. Because we are so different. And that's one of the greatest reasons for marriage conflict. And so many, many, many people. 80% of men end up in affairs falling into some other sexual relationship because they've never been trained, number one, how to manage their own sexuality. Secondly, they've never been delivered and healed from the pain and failures and things that happened in the past. And the same applied to our ladies. Um, I mean, people are falling in affairs all over. Woman is doing it to, to, to feel um, of, of value. They want to feel um, loved, and women are looking for love. They are looking for acceptance. They, they want to feel they belong. Men is looking for sex. They, uh, a man just has a urge to release his sperms, and eventually he can use any wrong place if he's not focusing and managing it in the direction of God's purpose. So what's the facts about sex? Men continually produces sperms and a need of created to get rid of the seed. Uh, ladies especially take notice that the man has testicles. Now, ladies, you have also an egg cell that is being produced once a month that is building up and is waiting for a sperm to fertilize it so it can become a baby. And that little, that egg, if it's not fertilized once a month, it will come in, th out uh, in that way. And I'm not going into the detail of the, the medical stuff. I think a medical person can explain this far better than me. But therefore, you have your monthly periods. And as you have monthly periods, you, uh, there's a release of that potential egg cell coming out. Now, you can't control it. You just... Some of you get PMS, uh, you feel, you know, discomfort and things like that when that's happening in your body. Now, ladies, what you feel once a month, men might feel every day, uh, just in a different way because uh, their bodies, their testicles are producing sperms and the sperms are generated by any healthy man. And the more healthy they are or more active they are, the more sperms they actually create. The more healthier they eat, the more sperms and healthier sperms they are producing. And uh, therefore, your body has a natural desire to release this seed. And therefore, it builds up in the body of a man. And therefore, a man might have uh, erection, you know, in a, in a moment that he is not even thinking of sex, or he was not even thinking of his wife or anyone else, he might have an erection because of his body says, hey, it's now time to release this sperm. And now you have to manage, say, man, this is not the time for this stuff, and you need to take chance. Now, men in general tend to, to have more erections in the mornings because the men's testosterone level are far higher in the mornings than in the evenings. Therefore, men can perform sexually far better in the mornings after a night of rest as because of their testosterone levels rising. And, uh, but the importance here is that it's normal for any man to, to feel that testosterone is working in my body. That is what making you a man. And because of that, there's a normal function and testicles produce sperms and the sperms wants to get out. So the question is, where is the sperms going to get out and when, how? Now, some funny religious people have some policy or, 
or a teaching that is totally illogical, uh, that seldom works in anyone's life, and that's, they say, because they believe men may not touch themselves, or boys may not touch themselves, they believe that the boys must wait until they have an erotic dream. And when they have an erotic dream, they will have an erection, and in the dream they will ejaculate, the seed will come out. So uh, now they say that is the solution to get your seat out. Wait until you have an erotic dream that you will release your seat. Now, I mean, an erotic dream is an erotic dream. Now, whether you dream it and you do it in your sleep or whether you think it with your brain and you do it while you're not asleep, what's the difference? And so to justify one above the other, it's, it's just pure stupidity. So uh, the natural... Behavior in men is that there's a tendency to release it. The question is just now, how are they going to do it? Now, masturbation is part of the discovery of your own sexuality. So for any little boy growing up, especially I'm talking about the boys, but the girl also, it's, it's a way of discovering that I am a sexual being and I can function sexually. I mean, I'm amazed to find out some people, even uh, yesterday I've read about a lady that's married for 12 years, that after counseling now, that the first time in her life she had an orgasm with her husband. The first time in her life, after 12 years of marriage. Now, it's amazing that many people who have been coming out of uh, these super religious backgrounds thought that it's filthy to touch myself, it's only bad girls who touch themselves, it's only bad girls who talk about sex, and because of that they think it's, it's very pure to be non-sexual, and they actually suppress this, and they never develop, and eventually they get into a marriage, and they are the people who, who have a lot of marriage difficulties, they are the people who you need to counsel 10 years after they get married, you know, to get them just to wake up in terms of their sexuality and to function normal in, in, in a relationship. So those who are raised in a house where sexual things are dealt with in a natural way, where they've seen a loving relationship between a father and a mother, where they can see father, mother hug each other and kiss each other, there's, there's an automatic teaching manifestation to know but there's intimacy and you teach children and we can speak a lot about how to teach children about sexuality but children who's raised in a healthy home where there's a lot of love and acceptance and hugs and kisses those children are raised sexually healthy and they are not they don't tend to fall into to uh, uh, addictiveness in terms of masturbation or anything else. They are the children who will not fall into drugs and things like that because their, their emotional cups are full with love. And where children is being raised in a house where their cups being continuously filled with God's love, those children will not necessarily ever get involved or get addicted to anything in life. And addiction is actually something I use as a crutch to overcome my weakness. So addiction can only operate in people who have weaknesses. So if you are healthy emotional, uh, you can't get addicted to anything because your, your wholeness, your completeness is your protection. And you need to understand that and operate f according to that. So masturbation will not become addiction in the lives of those who are raised in emotional healthy household. So that's the, that's the key how to raise children sexually healthy, give them a healthy household, give them fatherly love, godly love, uh, and they will be sexually balanced and mature. Masturbation can be addictive if a person is emotionally broken. Many times masturbation is an escape from the reality of pain or distress to an own created pleasure. Now, that's most of the people Actually, I want to say all the people who are addicted to masturbation are doing it because there's a root emotional pain that needs to be addressed. And I mean, you find many people, if we talk about girls, ladies, they will be addicted to masturbation and overeating. So many of the overweight girls are also addicted to masturbation because the food and the sex is all crutches to overcome my emotional 
weakness or my emotional pain, what is being done to me, the rejection, abuse that I went through as a little girl. Now, so I see masturbation or addiction to masturbation in the same way as overeating. And you need to learn how to eat well and eat balanced and to care for your body. The same apply in terms of the sexual. So I really want to, to help you to get delivered from the lie that touching yourself uh, is a sin. Uh, if that is the focus, then you are missing God's purpose, like eating food or visiting people or watching TV. TV can become just as an addiction or a wrong activity than masturbation. So it's all about God, number one, first in your life, priority right in your life. You need to get focus and, and then you need to, to, to care for your body. So what would I say to that young man that came to me and say he's, he's masturbating every day? I was explaining to him that sex is a gift from God. And then I teach him, you know, that I want to help you to get free from addiction to sex. And I did that. I pray for him, I help him, so that sex become, is not his obsession anymore. That I said, man, you pray with it, and when you feel you have sexual urges and, and, and desires, you pray. You say, Lord, strengthen me. I feel I have a desire for sex, and I want you to help me to take charge over it. And I think there's a, a healthy position where children can come without guilt to, to know that, I mean, I need to release the sperms. I need to release this or get this, this tension that's been built up in my body to be released, to come out of my body so that I can relax, sleep better, and function better. And uh, it's obvious that when sexual energy is being released, you sleep better, you actually concentrate better, you function better, and you're more relaxed if you are not operating under guilt. So uh, it all depends on your understanding of this. So the power of fantasies. On that next page, I say masturbation can be positive. You see that? Uh, get rid of repressive, repressed sexual energy. And I give you the, the reason where it might be positive. When a spouse is sick or uh, up unloading of seed, uh, activate endorphins that heal, practice sexual fitness. Now I know there's... It would be people, and there will always be people that's against what I'm saying here. And I really don't care about them. I only care what God is saying. I want to communicate truth to you because I want you to be healthy. I want you to be free without guilt. I want you to enjoy life. And I want you to enjoy everything God has given to you and, and not get addicted to anything. The only addiction, if we can call it addiction, is God himself. It's Jesus Christ in your life. You need to be a worshiper. Spend time in the presence of God, worshiping him. You need to be, be physically active and do active things. Then sex won't become the main focus in your life. So the power of fantasies. Just a little bit about this because this is the downfall of so many people. I believe that fantasies in general is not sin. I believe fantasies can be positive and be used well in a marriage relationship where two comes together and there is fantasies that that is within the the uh, the rules of the marriage or the, the the rules of this relationship and fantasies about great things we've done together great things we're going to together uh, memories about great stuff we had together there's nothing wrong about good memories and fantasies can be built on good memories and things that we want to do and did do things together. So fantasies can be great. But the problem for most people is they can't separate fantasies from the sexual masturbation. And therefore, they always need to focus on some pornography. They have to focus on some illegal picture or something they are thinking about. Then they will masturbate. And that, that missed the whole purpose that is taking the the baby throwing the baby out with the bath water then you know the the real problem is what you are thinking the real problem is that the, the thoughts in the in your mind and jesus said that whenever you desire a woman here it is same as you've done it already yourself so we need to help you with that, to realize that the sinful activity is here i have to war here i may not allow pictures, women, 
faces, persons, that's not my wife, to come into my mind. I may not fantasize, and therefore, you know, and, and how difficult it might sound, you know, masturbation without fantasies might be neutral. There's nothing in that. But people will not like to do that because even many psychologists will say, man, I have any fantasy. Uh, I've seen books for, for married couples that say, man, fantasize anything. Fantasize that you're sleeping with your neighbor's wife. It's fine. And we know from God's perspective, it's not fine. And so I need to operate within the, 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 the framework or the borders that God has given there, uh, what I may do in terms of fantasies. So fantasy is usually an escape from reality to something or somebody that is inaccessible or forbidden. Fantasies can be used positively also. Fantasies become sin when it's causing wrong thoughts. Matthew 5, Jesus is talking about what your heart desires. And he actually talks about, you know, when your eye is, is, is committing sin, then take your eye out. When your hand is doing wrong, cut it off. And he's talking not about the real eye, real hand. It's about your vision. The eye is the symbol of your vision. You need to cut those visions, those fantasies that is causing sin in your life. You need to cut those actions. The hand is the symbol of things that you do. You have to cut these wrongdoings, wrong practices out of your life if it causes you to fall. So how do I overcome and manage masturbation? So it's not about just overcoming it, but managing it. To bring it in the presence of God, that there is no guilt, that you know that God is looking after you. And that God has given you that sexual energy you feel inside of you. And that you can present it to God. Say, Lord, I feel it. What must I do now? Help me with this, Lord. And that I always can bring it back to God that he can help me and teach me in terms of this. First of all, you need healing and deliverance from all molestation, pornography, and experimentation. So those things always have some negative effect. Most of that is even demonically. It causes emotional pain and demons to come in your life that causes sexual dysfunction. Therefore, when, when you've been involved in any molestation acts in your life, if you've been involved in, in watching pornography, if you're involved in watching sexual things that's illegal and, and, and stuff that you've seen, even hearing stuff, especially with the girls, many of us are even getting pain through what we hear. We are getting sexually dysfunctional about what we hear, not only what we see. Get healing. And you go to someone, you allow your leader, and you allow a counselor to come and minister and break that stuff. It's easy, it's quickly, but you just need to bring it out. Confess it and let God wash it and clean it and free you from that forever. And then you have the responsibility, as the Bible says, think about the things that's up there, that's clean, beautiful, positively, godly, and not the things of this earth. So you have to manage your mind. You have to, to, to think, stop thinking about the bad things in this world. You're watching news, you're watching all the bad movies and stuff, so you're filling your brain with a lot of bad stuff. The Bible says think about the good things, the positive things. Fill your brain with God's godly things. And then it will become far more easier. Accept and develop your own sexuality. Speak to God about it. Accept it, develop it. And somehow you need to understand how your body works. You need to understand the sexuality of your body, how it functions. Even as we prepare you for marriage. Number four, the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. So when the Holy Spirit works in your spirit... The result of that is all the nine fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and etc. But part of the nine gifts of the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is, is the fact that you have uh, self-control. It's a supernatural ability to control yourself. So you're not like a dog. When a dog sniffs the neighbor's dog that's on heat, he will go mad and he wants to get that bitch. But you are not like that. God wants you to manage and control. And whenever you see stuff that's sexual and things that's controlling your mind, you take responsibility. You take control. You submit it to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Avoid being alone. 
and aimlessly lying in bed. That's most children's problems. They don't have things to do. They are, they are busy with rubbish, and they, they want to do, and eventually sexual experimentation becomes part of the game they play to keep themselves busy. Lead the full life of sports, friends, and spiritual edification. Get married and enjoy a maximum intimacy life with your spouse until you go to heaven. And that's, that's the, the best that you can do and enjoy. God wants us all, you know, and that's why he gave you a helpmate to fulfill you to be together forever. Now, in the last couple of minutes, I want to just speak about sexual, sexual obsessions in terms of pornography, lust, affairs, and others. Now, I think I've mentioned some of it already. And uh, just uh, uh, awareness of some of this. Let's talk a moment about pornography. Pornography is... And you get different kinds of pornography. Um, you get uh, what they will call hardcore or softcore. And, uh, and obvious in the, in the world, people will say, man, softcore pornography is not so bad as hardcore and so on and so on. I've just recently heard a psychologist speaking on South African television about uh, the potentially pornography in South Africa. And she said that, she thinks it's good for children to watch pornography. It's a good educational training for them. Now, <laughs> that's the opinion of someone who does not know God. And, you know, when your children has been raised in a, in a healthy household, they don't need to see those things that way. Uh, this lady who is a psychologist to say this, first of all, she's divorced she hasn't got a husband, and she's living in affairs with many men and people. And uh, so she has got no right to speak, not on behalf of the people of God. Now, what is God saying about this? What's the power of pornography? And you need to understand, and there's a lot of study being done on pornography, and you need to know, pornography is equal to the strongest drug you can get. Think about the strong drug, heroin. Opium, all the other names. Pornography has the same effect on your brain. The moment you see that, and I especially talk to men, because men are sexually excited by what they see, not women. That's why pornography has got very little influence on women. But it has a powerful, controlling, uh, hypnotizing effect on men. When men is watching pornography, your brain is being stimulated as if you are sniffing coke. And the same effect, it puts your brain on a high. And, and you get addicted to that just like that. The same as with drugs. So what's wrong with pornography? Because it's not normal and it's the, the observance of of sexual activity beyond what God wants you to do, it has a tremendous effect on your brain. That's, that's chemically. But secondly, it also has a demonic effect on your system. With all pornography, unfortunately, or fortunately, with all pornography, there's demons. And whenever you watch pornography, you are opening yourself up for the potential picking up of demons in your life. That spirit of lust is coming through that pages. It's coming through that movie. And as you watch this blatant pornography, that spirit of lust is just coming on you. And it makes you excited. It wants you to have that. And, uh, and that spirit of lust will drive you to perform. Now, some people are, are thinking, and even psychologists will tell people, if you are, have a low sexual uh, uh, activity, watch pornography so it will stimulate you. I mean, that's not the solution. God wants you to be stimulated by your wife and your husband in a healthy, correct way. So uh, I will teach you that, that you don't need pornography in your life, but you, can, you need God and a love relationship and security and, and tenderness and ministry to one another, and that will change your life so that, I mean, your, your, your own sexual experience with the, the spouse, your mate, your, your girl, your woman of your youth, that becomes so much fun and fulfilled and, uh, and joy that it's far better and far beyond what pornography can do to your brain. And so many people are addicted. I, I, I had a person who even fly, flew in from Europe twice now to come and see me. 
because he said, I can't deal with this pornography addiction in my life. So the first time he came to see me, I was ministering to him, and he was even not the believer at that time. He was not believing in God and in Jesus. He was, his wife was, but he, he said openly, I'm not the believer. I said, all right, God loves you so much. When I pray for you, he will heal you immediately. So, and he did. I ministered to him. He went back to Europe. A year later, they came to South Africa again. They came to visit me. No, not a year, two years later. He said to me, you know, for a one year after you've prayed for me, I was totally free. And then I made a mistake one day. I just wanted to test it, and I went to watch it again, and it hooked me again. And, and it, it got hold on me again. He said, it's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still there. You know, and that applies to everything. If, if you go back to where you come from, Paul calls it, it's like a dog going back to his vomit and eat his vomit. Why would you go back to eat your own vomit? Ha! You know, that is life. And, and, and this guy fell into it again. But this time, he accepted Jesus even before he came to me. He said, I'm now a Christian. And now I've got Jesus Christ in my life. And I know when you pray now for me, I will be free for the rest of my life. I will never go back to that stuff. He said it, it, it was so controlling him. He said he wanted to commit suicide many times after he watched pornography. And he masturbated with that. He wants to kill himself. He had this feeling of, I don't want to be alive. It's filthy. I hate this. I don't want this in my life. But he couldn't get out of that because he had the control over his life. I want to get you and understand, help you to understand. And ladies, you need to understand, men is working differently than you. They are observing and sexually stimulated by what they see. That's why we see all the beautiful women, and we saw all their shapes and all their things. It's stimulating us. And we are stimulated, unfortunately, by many things around us that's not our wives. Otherwise, we need to go blind through the world. But you need to protect your brain. So when I see things that sexually or sensual uh, and, and it draws my attention, I have to cut it off and stop looking. So that is part of managing my brain. And the same apply. I cannot just go and allow something that gets me to be addicted to it to control my life. And I need to break it. And the strongest way of breaking that is to submit it to someone who can pray over you, pray for you and break that thing. And that applies to all kinds of sexual wrong behavior, obsessions like pornography, if you feel you, are, you have an unusual uh, de sexual desire that, that is controlling your life, then you need healing. You know, and what is unnatural? Some people think, I mean, women have told this on me so many times. You know, one lady said, there's something wrong with my husband. He's a sexual freak. He wants sex more than once a month. Now, the freak is not the husband. The freak is this lady, because there's something wrong of you. Now, that, that is the world that we are in. People have different expectations. They don't know how this is working. And, uh, so, but you get people. I had a guy who masturbated four times a day, and that was even still not enough for him. And he was sniffing drugs with that to, to heighten this experience. He was drinking some medicine that had some opium inside of it just to heighten this experience of, of his uh, sexual drive. And so people are so many times bound in this and need deliverance. If you're bound into affairs, you continue falling into them. You can't stay away of playing games with this. Then you need healing and you need deliverance. This needs to be cast out of you. You need to come out of that forever in your life. All right, there's even some other funny uh, obsessions that people have uh, beyond the normal ones that we normally hear. And that's, I mean, for some of you, unbelievable to think about, but there's people who pre prefer having sex with animals. And they are out there. There's even young people and children who experiment with that. And people who get addicted to that and they make that part of their lives. Now, the Bible is very strong on this. Uh, when it calls it, talks about bestiality, when people have uh, uh, sex with animals, the Bible says people like that needs to be killed, stoned, uh, even as, as the Bible talks about incest, when, when parents have sex with their own children, those parents also need to be killed, the Bible says. 
Now, if we go back to the Old Testament killing principles, uh, we will have to kill a lot of people around us because it also say those who, who uh, step out of marriage and those who are in affairs need to be killed by stones. Then uh, we will have a lot of less people around us. Now, then we find people who we call do flashing. And it's amazing that there's really people like that. And I've, you know, when you go to student areas, uh, especially where there's flats where people are living in, uh, you have continuously these men that's walking around outside with their coats on. And then they are watching wherever there's girls looking out of a window and they will open up naked underneath and to show themselves. Now their satisfaction is in the fact that people see them naked. They seldom or ever have any, you know, even erection, or maybe they have an erection, but they don't. I mean, their, their uh, joy is in the fact that they've been seen, that someone saw them. And people get addicted to that. I remember that there was a well-known guy who was a great family, wife, children, who came to see me to say that this thing is, is haunting him. He's been caught up in this thing. He can't get every weekend when he's family does not know what he's doing. He's slipping out on a Friday night and he's going to neighborhood where, where he can find open windows and getting people to watch out so that he can flash for them. And that was part of his life and he couldn't get out of that. And it's very sickening. It's very, I mean, it's dysfunctional and you need deep healing for people who are doing that, who uh, wants to show off uh, and feel some satisfaction in that. Now, normally, you need to understand it. When there is people who love sex with children, for instance, what we call pedophiles, and you, you find a lot of them. There's a lot, many, many pedophiles, and very few pedophiles are actually treatable or, I mean, in the world sense, they, are, they will never be healed. Now, God can heal that. I've ministered to two that I know of that God healed completely and are happy, married, and healthy. But in a world sense, from the psychological perspective, pedophiles are not treatable. Even, you know, I've, I've watched uh, sessions of psychology, psychologists with them. I've listened to their own testimonies. They will be in jail for 15 years for what they've done to children. And they will be bragging about, in my life, I've already touched 200 children and raped them. And then their greatest desire is to get out of jail to find another child to rape. And that's their life. They live for that. And though these people are so dysfunctional. And actually, I believe that if they are not treated to be healed, they, they can't be, stay either in the jail or we need to, to kill them. Like any murderer. Anyone who molests a child is equally um, before God in terms of murder. And as we treat with murder people, uh, we need to treat them the same way. Uh, pedophiles are very, very destructive. Any pedophile destroy at least up to 200 children's lives in his lifetime. 200 children he will destroy in his lifetime. And he put the same spirit that's on him on these children. So you need to understand that's why we need to get rid of them in the community. Either heal them or kill them. And you can decide which one you want to do. But we want to heal people. We want to restore them. We can't allow them in the community. We can't allow them to go around because they destroy lives. And there's many, many, many of them. And they will end up becoming Satanists, or culture leaders. Uh, but many of them are in high positions. They are normal people per day, but they are destructive and destroy even their own children. Some pedophiles are, are stepfathers and old men that destroy the lives of little girls and little boys. Um, I've worked with a family where the, the, the man, the ex-husband, raped all the girls and all the boys of his own and of his ex-new um, husband. I mean, we talk about a lot of children that he raped all of them, uh, part of his anger and uh, part of his destructive behavior. This guy is totally dysfunctional. And... Um, so there's always hope for someone who wants to get healed and restored. Then, then you find people <clears throat> who love having sex with pain. The more pain, the more they enjoy the sex. And the pain actually helped them, they say, to heighten their experience of um, their orgasm. 
and there's people that get addicted to this. And uh, they are just as dysfunctional as any of the others who wants abnormal things to happen to satisfy their sexual behavior. So again, we need to ask what's normal, what is being allowed by God. Sex is being given to us to be fulfilled in marriage for two people who can enjoy each other and be fulfilled by each other. Now my challenge back to you people as we close the session and next time we're going to talk about homosexuality and why people are becoming homosexuals and how we can heal them and help them. Now, in the groups, obvious, I don't expect you in your groups or with people around you to share now your deepest sexual problems. Uh, I don't want you to do that. I want you to, if you need healing, and many of you do need healing, please find someone that you trust that you can share this with to receive healing. For the ladies, find a lady. Men, find a man. Uh, our approach, remember that, is as men, I never counsel women. And my wife never counsel men. If we do that, we do it as a team. But so ladies, never come to me and expect me to counsel you. I don't counsel ladies. Uh, I will refer you to ladies that can do a better job than me. Uh, please find someone and we can uh, refer you to someone where you can really get healing. But your sexuality, it's so important in your life that you are healed, that you are delivered from all guilt feelings, that you are delivered from any addictiveness, any wrong, funny, strange, obsessive behavior. You need to be delivered from that so that you can be healed for the rest of your life. And, uh, and people are addicted to funny things. I remember the day when one guy was with me and I thought, I, I've heard everything in life. And uh, he said, I want to tell you something. You have to pray over me because I have this big problem. I said, it's fine. I've heard everything in life. So you can't shock me. I said, yeah, but this thing you have never heard. I thought, man, you don't know what I know. Actually, I have not heard this one before. And he said, you know, I, I have a problem. When I smell socks, you know, socks, the sweaty socks, smelling, stinking, sweaty socks, it says it activates him sexually. I thought, wow, that's a new one. Now, maybe there's some of you that has something you need deliverance from. So anything that's abnormal, anything that is controlling your life, anything that you are even not sure of, get to someone who can pray and help you and make sure that you are helped, that you're healed, restored. If you are dysfunctional in your marriage, please let us help you. First, you, yourself being healed, and then we work with your marriage to you get your marriage relationship healthy and healed. We would love to help you. This ministry is there to make people whole, complete, and restore them completely. So I bless you in Jesus' name for completeness in your health, completeness in your sexuality, completeness in your function and your normal lifestyle. And to glorify God with this temple in every day and everything you do. And uh, enjoy life. Enjoy what God has given to you. Enjoy the husband and wife that God has given to you. And um, sacrifice everything to God. Now in your groups, just pray for one another. I don't want you to, to share secrets now. Just pray for one another for God's complete healing to come into each other's life. And if you want to talk afterwards with your group leader, you're welcome to do that. Or one of our leaders, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but just let's pray for one another. God bless you. May you be, be strong, growing, mature, healthy in every aspect of your life. Love you. Bless you. Bye-bye.